Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel. I'm Eric and today we are watching episode 8 of season 1 of Wheel of Time, the season finale. It's, uh, yeah, it's the 24th, so Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, um, Happy Yuletide, whatever. Um, whatever you feel uh, fits you, you know? <laughs> and uh, this is a perfect Christmas present, I guess, because, yeah, season finale and this season has been... Oh man, I've been, I've really, really enjoyed this so far. I don't know, there has been flaws, there has been issues, so to speak, but I am completely fine with them so far, and I'm, I'm so excited to see where this goes in the future, and in this episode as well, of course, like, but, but like subsequent seasons. I've seen, of course, like a lot of criticism of it, and I feel that most of it is not valid, because like, you don't know what's going to happen in the future. Like things that that don't show up when they're supposed to, they might show up in the future. Like for instance, one great example is from the previous episode when we saw a flashback to Winter's Night, uh, to Beltine, Beltine Night, uh, when we saw the flashback of Rand carrying Tam back to Emmons Field. Like when the during the first episode, when that didn't happen, I was like... Uh, uh, what was going on, you know, kind of. Um, like, and I didn't like that that was missing. At the same time, I understood that it was missing because there is no way you're able to, like, have the mystery of who is the dragon if you include that. Like, if you include, if you, like, more directly translate the book, then there is never going to be any mystery as to who is the dragon reborn. But that was one example of something that I very much missed from the books that I thought they decided to skip in order to preserve the mystery of who was the Dragon Reborn. But then in the previous episode, they had it. So like characters and events that I miss from this season that I thought that it was like a mistake to exclude, it might not be a mistake because it might come in the next season or a season after that. Like stuff that we feel... Um, they've done a grave disservice by not including might still be included we just don't know when it's going to happen so like I want to wait with like uh, I don't want to give this show a hard time yet you know like there are flaws but I want to ignore them I want to see where they go with it I want to give it like uh, three seasons four seasons maybe well at least three seasons to see how this whole thing turns out kind of to give them a bit more time so far, I'm really happy with what we're getting, to be honest. Like, I saw, I don't know if you're aware of this, but there was like, there was a whole big drama around this, uh, this IP, this intellectual property, The Wheel of Time, where there was, I'm not sure, I think they were called Red Eagle Entertainment, who got the license to develop like a movie or TV show based on the, on the IP uh, from, from Jordan's widow, Harriet, and they were about to run out of time. It was about to be defaulted to go back. The rights were supposed about to go back to Harriet and like the Robert Jordan estate. So they made something quick. They put together something quickly and paid a, 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 sh a channel, paid a network in order to air it. So <laughs> just so they could keep the uh, license, keep the property on to develop it. And it was awful. And I've seen other shows as well. Like, I've seen other things. Like, I haven't seen uh, the Shannara uh, series on MTV, but it looks like young adult stuff, you know? And I saw, like, I used to enjoy a lot more uh, Terry Goodkind's uh, books. Uh, now, I don't know so much anymore. But, like, I was, I remember, I was excited to see uh, the, Sword of the, uh, the Sword of Truth series brought to life with... Uh, what was that called? Legend of the Seeker, I think. And that was turned into basically Xena Warrior Princess, like that kind of show. And like, is this show perfect? No, by no means is it perfect. But could it have been so much worse? <laughs> yes, <laughs> it definitely could have been so much worse. It could have been a complete travesty, and I don't think it is. So last time was, without a doubt, my favorite episode of the series so far. Uh, we got to Faldara, which we do in the books as well, and stuff happened. Like, our, we had a run-in with Machin Shin, and in that encounter, uh, it told everyone stuff. And we found out that it told Rand that 
you know who you are, you know that you are the Dragon Reborn. And then there was a bunch of flashbacks and stuff. So like the mis the the mystery is over, I guess. Like the who it is has been answered. It might, I don't know, they might try to go back on it. We'll see, I guess. But as it is, Rand believes he's the dragon. And he uh, spoke with Moraine and they set out on their own. And that was the end of the previous episode. Them entering the, the Blight and heading towards the Eye of the World. Where they believe that the, the Dark One is imprisoned. I don't think that Lon and the others are going to take this line down. <laughs> you know, they're going to be like, they left without us. Oh, we're going to give them hell when we catch up to them, <laughs> you know? So yeah, I think I've rambled enough. I want to get into this and see how this ends. As always, I just quickly want to mention the Patreon. If you want this uncut and um, yeah, early, I guess, not that early, but if you want it uncut, not edited down like here on YouTube, then check out the Patreon. Link is in the description down below. With that said, let's get into the season finale of Wheel of Time, season one, episode eight. To move his armies. I could have sworn I just saw Admiral Fane walk past us. Yeah, I'm so excited to see what's going to happen with Fane. It must happen in this episode, right? But whichever of you goes to the eye of the world and is not the dragon, you will die there. That's what you think. You are the dragon reborn. Oh, this is going to be so, so much fun. Oh my, 3,000 years ago. That's right. And him and all went into the group of Conagile Lalasa. Moro. I don't Is he oh, I love this. I didn't think we would get any views from this before the breaking. Yeah. They did. I shook a dinosaur so. No. The, they had a very different plan for how to solve this. The dark one trying to escape. The Valerie had someone lose Theron Telemon. Yes, it is the dragon. It's Lata Poseidekume. I managed to remember her name. That's. I'm impressed with myself a bit. I want this, actually, I want this story as well, of like, the prior to the breaking. It was a very different world back then. Because, you know, the, the wheel is cyclical. So, like, this story that's happening now, it takes place, like, in the far future. So, like, humanity has risen and then fallen back to, like, a more medieval, to, like, where it is now. And then technology rises and like it all just goes in a circle. Like a wheel, you know? <laughs> like it's divided up into four ages, I think. Whereas like um, each age represents a different level of technological achievement. Basically, something al al along those lines. So like what that was, was like the fourth age, I think. Uh, and then... Uh, the world broke and we came back to the first age and second age. I think we're in the third age now and then it's gonna lead to the fourth and then it's gonna go back to the first and it's just gonna go go around in a circle forever Here we go <coughs> Nice <laughs> Oh, that looks awful boys from the borderlands sometimes like to test themselves against the blight and they yeah. come up wanting. Yeah, it doesn't end well. And consumes everything in its path, including young men in way over their heads. Yeah, the mushrooms are growing from him. <laughs> nice. You know we can't go. We have no idea where they are, where they're going. Only... <laughs> We're gonna go anyway. We're gonna find them. Don't you worry. I love him, Perrin. So do I. It is a shame that the actor playing Matt had to ditch. Could have been really interesting to see what it would have been like with him in these last two episodes. Good. We're getting closer. Yeah, you're getting out of these weeds. What are those? The Seven Towers of Malkia. Malkia. Yeah. That's where Lance said he was born. 
Yeah, it's fallen. It's just another sign that the Dark One's strength is building. The infection is spreading more and more. I really like what this looks like, actually. I was unsure when I first saw it, but yeah. Are you alright? I don't think he is, no. It wasn't you who I tracked. It was her. She has a tell. I can show you how. Oh, yes, let's track her. <laughs> you are a remarkable woman, Wisdom. <laughs> yes, she is, very much. She's a bit too stubborn for her own good, but that's okay. I'll be something other than a Wisdom. I said I doesn't don't really wet either. Yeah, but it can't be you. <laughs> because it is not me. <laughs> hey, don't lie down, dude. <laughs> he knows where we are. He's coming. I think this is still a dream. I wouldn't have expected it would be you. No, put the mask back on. You look nothing like him. But still, you're him. Yeah, you don't look like Lusterin. I see it behind your eyes. Yeah. You're not the dark one, you silly thing, you. The last time you, you came with 99 companions, do you have any idea what you're doing? <laughs> he really doesn't know. <laughs> He's just winging it. A heron mark blade? Where did you get that? Yeah, he doesn't deserve it. Because the heron mark indicates a sword master. And Rand is clearly not the sword master. Tunnel Thor, right? <laughs> oh, you really do think he's your father? He is, though. That's sweet. I mean, he might not be the biological father, but he is, he's the dad. Tam is his dad. This is a dream. Hey, that was... I don't know if that was clever, but... I mean, it did get result. This is about you. You always have a plan, within a plan, within a plan. Don't try to convince me that for this you've got nothing. It's hard to plan for something. I mean, it's been 3,000 years. And when you channel into it, it'll increase your power a hundredfold. But he has no idea what he's doing with the power, though. So, I mean, having a Sangreal is not going to really help. And what do I do with that power? You put him back where he belongs, where his touch can't reach the Earth for another 3,000 years. This is so naive. <laughs> on, the bo on, on both of their parts. Like, I, I... Everyone realized that, right? Because this is not a one-season show. There's going to be more seasons. Like, obviously, this is not going to be the end of the Dark One this season. What do you hear? Nothing. Ever since the day I channeled, I hear nothing. Yeah, you can't listen to the wind anymore. Uh, the, the, the power has found another way to express itself now that you have access to it. I love the little noises here that's everywhere. Will you teach me how to channel? She can't. <laughs> Every time you touch the source, it'll take you closer and closer to the madness. Yeah, that's. I don't think that's the reason. Like, men and women are different. It would be like a bird trying to teach a fish how to fly. You know, it's, it doesn't work. And she beat me with the one power. Grabbed the power myself and I stopped her. Without even thinking about it. Without even trying. That sounds like a terrible idea. When your life's on the line, the power will be there. It's a... <laughs> I don't think it's a good idea to use the power that like cr makes the world move and just use it on instinct. <laughs> All I know is that everything I've ever seen, the best things and the worst, they've all come true eventually. Yes, the eventually there is a very key component. What is it? Yeah. <laughs> her... Her abilities is not something to be jealous of, poor Min. 
Because <laughs> she can't turn it off. <laughs> Our men in the fortress have spotted at least 60 fades amongst them, so there must be at least five to ten. Uh, oh my goodness. No more Trollocs pouring out of the blight. Oh, wow. That's a lot. And burn their dope piss and hides. I yeah, go, no. <laughs> there are dark friends inside our walls. Of course there is. There's Fane, at least. We need to send our entire force to support the men in the Gath Fortress. The Gath Fortress. That's a bad idea, because that means that uh, Faldara will be, will be defenseless, you know? Uh, oh, right, that's Ingtar. Hey, it's one of these things. A well. This is it, isn't it? I don't know what it's called. I know that these things have been built in, um, like, in India and Asia. Southeast Asia. Like, step wells? I don't know what it's called. So it's... Yeah, Lan is coming. But it's like, it's Moraine and Rand. What about the rest? <laughs> yes, home. <laughs> The gap cannot hold against that force. It simply cannot. The men will hold the gap. We face today is five times the size of what's come before. And this isn't even a big force. <laughs> this is just like a, a small amuse bouche. <laughs> today, Tarwin's gap will fall. And then this city will fall after. No matter what we do. No, come on, dude. We can do this. Tarman Gaiden is here. The last battle. I don't think so. I think you're being a bit overly dramatic. But then again, it's been... It's been a long time since there was conflict on this level. Let us hope we buy the women and men of this world enough time to stand a fighting chance. You got this. It's fine. What was this place? We have no idea. Every record of its existence was purged from the White Tower's libraries by dark friends. I'm so excited to see how this is going to end. <laughs> you said you remember- Yeah, there it is. The old symbol. The flame of Tarbalon and the dragon's fang. I fought someone here. The dark one. That was a symbol. Yes. This symbol. I love this approach, that like, that they don't really have an idea, like so much has been lost to the passage of time. What's this now? Be quiet. You finished already? <laughs> oh, this is just, this is such a sweet little dream. Rand. Yes, come back. Did Stop you think dreaming. Happened? You're nowhere near strong enough here, Moraine. <laughs> to know the one power is there. Just at the end of your fingertips. Yeah, he shielded her so she can't. Eh, can't touch it. That's, I like that, that's really cool. The design of that wall. I'm confident that this will turn out well. What's in there? They are calling for all women who can travel to help defend the city. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> they are pretty strong. <laughs> Nynaeve and Egwene. That's strong enough to deal with five to ten thousand troll logs. They're not very organized, but then not really supposed to be. <laughs> How can we just sit here while everyone else is willing to fight? I'm standing. You must. <laughs> awesome, loyal. Yeah, escape this sappy dream. Come on, Rand. What's wrong with I you? I thought you wanted to go to the White Tower to Beth, this is where I want to be. Before we left, we carved something into that tree. Do you remember what it was? She should, because it's your dream, so it's taking from your memories. It's really you. <laughs> it's <laughs> not. Oh, my goodness. 
Hey, hey, hey. Frozen. That's a neat trick. You can remake the world in your image. Make it whatever you want it to be. Yes, that's what you say. It's just tempting you. It's just lying to you. I wonder what he'll choose. Light or dark. If he doesn't choose the light, I'll choose for him. Lord Dakota. Dakota? <laughs> They're just cr climbing on top of each other. Oh, that's how you're gonna do it. No. Uh, I thought you didn't think she was real. Stop it! Stop. No, but it's still traumatizing. How do I make it real? Simple. Oh no. There it is. What is it? The horn of bloody Valir, lad. To be blown at the last battle. What? When I reach out to you with the one power, accept it. Let me in. <laughs> yes, as if Nynaeve and Egwene have any idea how to do that. By the light. The power. Yeah. Two of them have a lot of it. <laughs> it's just a question of how to use it effectively. This is a bit too dark for my liking. Like color wise. Want that little girl so much. She's how he is. No. This is so how is this so easily convincing you, Rand? Well. He's channeling. You don't even know what he's channeling to do. Make her yours. Oh, the horn's gonna get stolen, isn't it? Now turn and strike him. That seems fairly effective. Oh my, she burned out. Make it what you want. What about what she wants? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you don't want people to just be puppets. What happened? Stuff. <laughs> I did it. That's what you... Th <laughs> like, it's not gonna be this easy, dude. <laughs> this... no. Oh, he'll be fine. I'm burning! You have to stop! You're gonna kill us! <laughs> she's uh, well, she's stoned at the moment. No, no, I need, what are you doing? Feel your brain and know that we all stood before you. No, what what's this now? What just happened? Nine. She's okay. <laughs> she 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 must be okay, otherwise I'm going to be really upset. You're Tavirin. Usually there's only one, maybe two in a generation, but... Yeah, it's weird that there's so many. Five of you in one village. Yeah, and so strong. That's why we sent the Trollocs not to kill you. But to bring you to him. <laughs> Are you figuring it out yet? Balance means that you will turn to the shadow, some of you. Maybe all of you. Matt? Didn't think I'd see him again. It's true, isn't it? What they say about man who can channel, that eventually they go so mad they kill everyone they've ever loved. Yeah, unfortunately. That your journey has just begun. Tell them I didn't make it back. I cannot lie. You'll work out a way. You owe me that much. Today isn't the end. It's the beginning. That much you're right on. But all five of you have a part to play. I hope Uno's okay, by the way. 
And the guy I thought it was Ingtar was apparently not Ingtar. Where's Rand? He's gone. <laughs> yeah, that's one way to put it. <laughs> the dog. He... Oh, he's severed? I can't touch the source. Oh. I thought it just shielded her. I don't know. There's many. I I have question. I have questions, or question marks at least. How's how's Nynaeve doing? I don't like this implication. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. There it is. Good. <laughs> Good. I was about to be a bit of a a bit upset. <laughs> Yes, we're gonna talk about this now. It's Quindia. Yeah, I thought that that's what I thought. No, it can't usually. That's that's why this is kind of significant. What does it mean? That this wasn't the last battle. I fear it was the first. Yes, that's more like it. It's too early. Way too early. I mean, it's just season one. Far western shore. That's quite the distance. Oh no. I think it's time for a, to set up a cliffhanger. Or, I mean, I think it's time for a cliffhanger. Yep. Here they come. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Moon, me <laughs> oh no. Why are you doing this? What's the purpose of this? Okay, hmm. That was episode 8 of Wheel of Time Season 1. Hmm, I don't know. I'll, I will say this was not the best episode of the season. That's still the previous episode, episode 7. That was easily the best episode of the season for me. There is quite a lot of changes here compared to the book uh, and, mm, but again like i said like i'm i'll give it time we'll we'll see what happens it is hard though <laughs> it is hard to not be like to not go complain because like there's a couple of things that i'm thinking of that i i don't know like for instance uh moraine says she can't feel this touch the source anymore or that she can't feel it like did uh, did that guy who Rand and Moraine thought was the dark one which come on it's clearly not uh, did did he sever her from the source much in the same day, same way that Logan was because those two th those two things looked very very different in how they appeared to us, you know. So was that actually what happened? Did did she get severed there? Or was it just that she's shielded and he left the shield on her, like tied it tied the knot on the weave and left it there and it's gonna wear off. And the horn is another is another thing. Uh, the horn of Valer that they located here in that apparently was in Faldara. I know that a lot of people apparently don't aren't great fans of how the first book ends. So for many book fans, uh, I've heard that they're going to be pretty okay with uh, the creators of this show taking some liberties with uh, how to interpret the end here. And they surely did that. But I don't know, for me, I kind of like how the first book ends. And I like this too, but it was very different. We got some key elements. I think the two big ones that's that I'm really curious as to how what they're going to do with it is the horn uh, as well as uh, Moraine. I don't know, man. I feel like I need to rewatch this episode or something. For me, I felt that the darkness, like the the Trollocs and like that whole battle scene, it felt too dark for me. You know. Uh, I like that it showed how dangerous the One Power is. How, like, 
it's frequently described as like when you hold the one power you feel more alive than than ever and like it's very intoxicating it's like a drug and like you, you don't ever want to let it go and it feels better the more of it you hold it's very tempting to just take in more and more and more but your body can't like there's a limit to how much your body can take and like someone who's very weak like Amalisa she can't handle a whole lot uh, she doesn't have access to a whole lot like Nynaeve who's really really strong and Egwene who's really really strong they they can take in quite a bit but even they have limits to how much if they try to drink in more of it than they are able to then bad things are going to happen like what happened here and I like that they illustrated how dangerous the power is to those who use it I like how mysterious it is um, with this guy who showed up you know who who was he you know um, we're meant to think that it's the dark one in human form but I don't think so no and I don't think that anyone I find it hard to believe that people will think that that is it because the dark one is like a concept you know it's like time or evil like it's I don't see how you personify that in a person. It's at the same time, it is a real force, but I don't know. But I like how they, like it was, it wasn't stated. Like he didn't introduce himself or he just like, you know who I am. <laughs> like they, they're really cultivating mystery here. And I, I really appreciate that. I really, really, really appreciate the cliffhanger here at the end. Uh, that gives us a hint as to what's to come next season this fleet of ships on the western shore of this continent approaching uh, who have women chained up with like muscles on the channel what's that all about you know i know what it's about of course but i really like that it it's setting up the next season in that way i also really really appreciated the cold open uh, with uh, louis Therin, the dragon himself yeah that that was good I love getting a look at the world pre-breaking because that's like the story I want. I want the story of what it was like Louis Therin and his quest and the Hundred Companions. I want to see more of that. What this episode mostly makes me wonder about and think about is what would this have been like if they had met, you know? It's a real shame, you know? Uh, but um, at the same time, reality happens. It's also a bit upsetting to me that it appears that Lord Agelmar died in Tarwin's Gap. And I don't know what happened to the rest of them, to, to the people in the throne room, um, like Uno and the other guy who I thought was Ingtar, but apparently it's not Ingtar. Loyal got stabbed, but he's obviously going to be okay. And uh, But the rest of them, I don't know. Ooh, it's, uh, it's intriguing, this... It's going to be interesting to see where it goes from here. And now we have to wait for a long frigging time. And that frigging sucks because I want more. I think that... I think that possibly they hurt themselves with this episode in order to set up future episodes and future seasons, you know? I think that might have been a central problem with this whole season, actually. Like that they're doing things that sets up future events at the cost of these episodes and it's understandable because there's so many things to come and you want to foreshadow things and because you have so much so much less time to do it in with just eight episodes and like in this format you have to move things along quite a bit it feels like yeah, you have a lot that you need to get done in very short time and that means that episodes are going to suffer in order to get a payoff later down the line and the problem with that is that maybe you won't get a chance to go down the line if it's not good enough to warrant getting uh, like renewed for more seasons for the season as a whole i um, i think i'm overall i'm positively surprised uh, or maybe not surprised 
it lived up to many of my expectations, I think. There were a couple of episodes that were standout really, really good, and others that were like a bit more mediocre. But at the same time, this is, the, I mean, I always have to remind myself that this is a show that's never going to live up to the hype I have uh, around the source material. Because as I've said, I'm 36 now, and I started reading this when I was like 14, maybe 13. Yeah, 13, 14, somewhere around there. And like, it's my, it's one of my top three fantasy series of all time. And like, there, <laughs> how do you live up to that? It's, it's going to be basically impossible. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's very early still, I think. And it's going to be really interesting to see where they go with it. But that is for a different day. For today, I am done. Now we get to wait for the next season. It's going to be a while. I'm going to do it when, when we get there, but yeah, we're going to have to wait. So, yeah, I'm done for today. And I thank all of you for joining me. Uh, I hope to see you in the next video, whatever that may be. And um, yeah, until then, do take care of yourselves and peace out. <laughs>